OK, so we need to understand the electromagnetic spectrum. Because this is actually how we're physically going to transfer information and communicate in space. Yes, so we can't send sound waves through space because they need air or something like this. So we're going to have to use electromagnetic waves. I mean, in principle, we could use gravity waves or new particle beams or something, but those have not proved to be very feasible at the no. moment. Uh, now, we're going to have to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum because electromagnetic waves exist in a whole bunch of different wavelengths. That's right. So now, depending on what other parts of this course you've done, you may have seen a lot about this, in which case feel free to skip over this. Yes. Um, but if not, we'll talk Oh, if you've forgotten it all, we'll talk <laughs> from first principles. So electromagnetic waves consist of an oscillating electric field and an oscillating magnetic field. That's right. Um, and they all travel at the same speed in the vacuum, yep. 300,000 kilometers a second, the speed of light in a vacuum, C. Uh, but the difference is either the wavelength or the frequency. That's right. So. Um, You've got to imagine a wave going past you, and it could be have a very long wavelength like a meter, and it's going past at some speed. The frequency is how often a peak goes past. Which is here, right? That's yeah. the frequency. It's called F, or sometimes the Greek letter nu. Yep. Uh, and that's counting how often a peak goes past. It's normally measured in hertz, which yep. means if it's 10 hertz, that means 10 peaks went past in a second. If yep. it's a, a megahertz, that's a million peaks went past in a second. And that's inversely related to the wavelength, yep. because it's all traveling at the same speed. And if like, these are all the peaks, and it's going at the same speed, you get a lot of peaks past in a second. Whereas if it's like one peak here and one peak there, and they go past, even if I run past you at the same speed, they're not coming past as frequently for you. That's right. So the frequency ends up being proportionate to the speed of light, that speed in a vacuum, yep. over the wavelength. And it turns out that you can also think of this radiation as being particles of light called photons. And the shorter the wavelength, the more punch they have, the more energy they have. So different parts of the spectrum. If you go back to the previous plot, um, we can talk about these in terms of wavelengths, we yep. can talk about them in terms of frequency, or we can talk about terms of energy, and all different ways of talking about the same thing. That's right. So radio waves have long wavelengths, low frequencies, but the low frequencies are still millions of cycles per second. That's right. Um, and rather low energy, whereas down the other end yep. in you know, gamma rays, then we're talking about very high energy, incredibly short, short. wavelengths, That's right. and um, unbelievably high frequencies. And this is quite important when we start then talking about how we are going to communicate in space, because depending on what electromagnetic wave we're using, we have to build the appropriate equipment to understand and listen to it. Yeah, so which one would you use? Well, for a start, most of the stuff doesn't get through the Earth's atmosphere. That's right. So if your ground station's on the Earth, then you would have to pick pretty much visible light or radio waves, or maybe a few little bits of the infrared. But those are your basic choices where the atmosphere is transparent. If you had a wonderful transmission that worked at a wavelength of one millimeter. That'd be perfect. Um, that would be perfectly good for sending no signals anywhere because the atmosphere blocks <laughs> it entirely. So you could try and communicate with your spacecraft all you like, and it's not going to be listening. So we're very limited, not just based on the energy that we need or the frequency that it's mm -hmm. operating through space, but what the Earth's atmosphere is doing. And given we want to get this data from space to Earth, we have to go through the atmosphere. Yeah. Now, so far, um, virtually all the communication is using radio frequencies. Yes. Um, in principle, it's possible to do it at visible. That has drawbacks, like clouds block that. But we'll talk about that under the new ideas, actually using yeah. lasers. But until very recently, virtually all communication with space has used the radio band, much like most communication on Earth for a very long time used radio. Nowadays, when you're making a phone call, it's probably radio as far as the That's mobile right. phone tower. Then it's probably on a fiber optic cable. So actually it's exactly. light most of the rest of the way. But we can't have fiber optic cable to our giant space satellites, so we have to use via radio waves via the whole way. So that means radio waves going to the spacecraft or mm -hmm. astronaut and radio waves back. Yes. And you have a choice of frequencies. So um, you can have wave, uh, so wavelengths. Um, the lowest frequency is past about 10 meters. Yep. The very low frequencies, like you can have radio waves of wavelengths of kilometers or hundreds of kilometers, but they don't normally get through the ionosphere of the Earth, yes. the ionized layer in the upper Earth's atmosphere. So they're great for talking over the horizon to somewhere else on Earth, but they're not so good for talking to space. Yes. Um, likewise, at the very short, like microwaves, the sort of radio waves that cook your baked potato, uh, those have wavelengths of like a centimeter, yep. uh, but that often doesn't penetrate the atmosphere because it's blocked by water vapor. So what we'll need to under figure out then is what radio waves we want to look at 
because that's going to dictate the size of the wave, which is going to dictate what we need to build. That's right.